welcome to Happy and Single. I'm your host, Joseph Anderson. You can find me on Instagram at the It's Possible Guy or many other social media sites with the same tag. Today is episode 11, and our topic today is if you weren't worried or sad or unhappy about being single, it would be something else. Today I'm in the middle of a wonderful coach training program with my amazing mentor, Michael Neal. And I just had something that occurred to me, like for so long, not necessarily worried about being single, especially in these past few years, but I have worried about lots of other things. And then I realized through this wonderful coaching program that if it wasn't that, it was going to be something else. My mentor told a great story today, and I'm probably going to mess it up, so hope, hopefully you get the gist of it. But he talks about a man that, that has 52 problems, and he goes around and looks for answers and can't really find answers to his problems. And then he hears about this wonderful guru up in this really, up in this really high mountain. And so the man climbs this mountain. He goes up to the very top and and meets this monk or guru-like figure. And the guru tells him, I want you to write down all of your problems. And the man writes down all of his 52 problems. And the guru then says, well, I I can't help you with the 52. But if you have a 53rd problem, I can help you. And the man inquisitively asks, why not? To which the guru responds, well, it was, it was a decree of heaven. Every single human was going to have, have 52 problems. Problems aren't necessarily problems when we really begin to explore them. I want you to really think about something that's going on in your life right now. Maybe it's being single. Maybe it's not having money. And maybe it's a particular characteristic that you have, physical characteristic. Now I want to ask you, if you weren't worried about that particular thing, What is it that you would be worried about? The only people without problems are dead. The only thing that's frustrating to you and worrying you is because the things that you call problems actually look like problems. But think about the answer to that question. If you didn't have those worries, if you didn't have those problems, what problems would you add on to? What if you looked at your problems more as an adventure, more as a journey, more as an exploration? I think sometimes we look at our problems as if they're life and death. Your problems are not life and death. They just just appear to be. You have, most of you, have never been without food and water to the point that you were on the street. That probably hasn't been your experience. I know it hasn't been mine. No matter how challenging, no matter how bleak, no matter how hard everything seems at times, it just seems that way. And all it takes is to see it a little bit differently for things to change in your life. If you've ever worked a projector, You know, there's a pretty common in houses these days. There's a big switch that increases the the size of the screen or the size of the projection very quickly. But when you do that, oftentimes you'll have to use a finer tuning switch to be able to get a, to be able to more focus in on the picture. And maybe that's how it is for us. Maybe we're just looking at the wrong screen. Maybe we're paying attention to the wrong thing. I remember listening to a model talk. 
And she shared that most models are some of the most self-conscious people that you'll ever meet. There is not a single perfect, physically perfect person in the world. And now, especially to those people that feel they have to be perfect in order to find their person, I want to speak directly to you for a few minutes. I have, I have dated or gone out with some very attractive girls. And you know the interesting thing? The girls that I have had the strongest connection and desire to get to know are not necessarily models. They are beautiful, don't get me wrong. But they're all, and they're all beautiful in their own way. And there's one particular girl that I'm thinking about right now that she is. I mean, she is what most people would describe as a bombshell. But behind that, at least one of the times that I spent time with her, there was no feeling. There was no nothing. And I think even that individual was trying really hard to make themselves feel important. We all just want to feel loved. We all just want to feel enough. But you were okay exactly as you are. And if you weren't frustrated about being single, it would be something else. I think one of the reasons that we pay attention to all of our imperfections is because we feel that they'll prevent us from getting an opportunity to be loved, to be married, to be in an intimate relationship with the person of our dreams. But I'm telling you, that's, that is not the case. I have met people that I felt there was no way in the world that there was another person out there just like them. No, I'm not talking specifics or saying names, but I really have. I've met very, very unique individuals. And you know what? Quite a few of those people are now married and I'm still single. And why is that? Well, there's a couple reasons. Because number one, I feel that Heavenly Father is in control. The sooner you let him be the operator of your Splash Mountain ride, and if you're not familiar with that analogy, let me share it for a moment. The ride at Splash Mountain take, that's at Disneyland and Disney World takes roughly 10 minutes. There's nothing you can do to make it go faster. I don't care if you were a world champion sprinter. You're not sprinting around that course and up those massive inclines in less than 10 minutes. And hey, if you can, fine, whatever. Prove me wrong and, and, and send me some on Instagram and I'll laugh about it. There's nothing you can do. But there's tons of stuff you can do to go slower. You can jump out of the, the tiny log and play in the water and moan and whine about how bad your life is. You can jump out and sit on the side and, you know, and, and, and whine about your life. Or as I use the word often on here, pining. You can pine for a better life, sitting on a pine bench and hoping that your life gets better. Or, well, and, or you could even smash all the aman, um, animatronics because you were getting so frustrated and upset with where you are on the ride. It's just the way the ride is for you, and everybody has their own type of Splash Mountain. And that's Heavenly Father. He, he is the only one that knows wh what is going on in your life and when it's going to be your time. But the other thought I had as I was thinking about this was if you weren't so worried about being single, or insert whatever else here, how much good could you be doing in the world? I really do. I think we get so fixated on what we don't have. We worry about all the things that we don't have. It's like I remember seeing a particular comic and there's a boy from the window that's, no, there's, there's a person that's jealous because he's riding a bike and another person's driving a Ferrari. And then there's a boy looking from the window, jealous of the person on the bike because he's in a wheelchair. 
none of us gets to pick what happens to us in this life. I mean, 100%. There's, there's things that you control. There's choices that you make. But at the end of the day, we don't control it. So what if you stopped worrying about it? Whatever your singleness is, I mean, maybe we could even call it a perceived weakness. There's a really cool scripture that says, Heavenly Father gives us weakness so that we turn to Him. And I know my weaknesses have caused me to turn to Him. And it's also caused me to turn to other mentors, other people that can be in my corner, that can help and serve me. There are so many things for you to be able to do. I actually once had a really cool conversation with somebody that I actually literally met cold calling. And he said something really interesting. He said, Joseph, what if, what if it was important for you to be single right now so that you could fulfill this part of your life mission? What if you couldn't do it being married? You know, in that comment, it must have been inspired. Because when I think about it now, and I think about one of my missions of helping single, be, single people become happy, I couldn't have done that unless I, unless I walked that road, unless, unless I was a miserable single for a long time. And I honestly can't remember if I was one of those that sat around and talked about like marriage all the time, or why I'm not married, or those type of things. I don't now. I actually somewhat laugh when people ask me that stupid question, why aren't you married? Well, there's a lot of answers. You know, you, you kind of look at people like, did you really just ask that? And back to what this gentleman said to me, as I look back, I realize that Heavenly Father really wanted me to serve this group of single people because there is no pain sometimes like being single. That, that's just the truth. Like, I mean, especially once you've been in a relationship, and I, I haven't been in a relationship in quite a while. I'm not going to say how long, but it has, it has been a little while because as I've said before, I'm super picky and I also have a pretty good idea of what I want. I just know. Each of us has this inner knowing. This has actually been what we've been talking about a lot in these coaching courses that I've been doing with my mentor, Michael Neal, and like a hundred other awesome, awesome people. We talked about that. We talked about our inner knowing and exploring our inner knowing. And you can call it your inner wisdom. You can call it listening to the still small voice. You can call it whatever you'd like. But if I'm being 100% honest, this entire podcast is about pointing you guys to that. Because in each of you, you have your own inner wisdom. And these massive spaces of time in these podcasts are so that inner wisdom can speak to you. Because especially single, well, not just single parents, but everybody is so busy. We're so busy doing all the things that we feel like we need to do that we're not allowing that inner voice to talk to us and tell us what it wants us to do and even help us understand what we want to do. What does that inner wisdom tell you that you could be focusing on if you weren't so worried about whatever your biggest problem is right now? And, and sometimes people get really frustrated and upset. And hey, me too. Like, it happens. You're human. And I never want you guys to ever get the idea that I'm not human. I mean, the first podcast of these I ever did, I kept, I think, 
I don't think I edited it. I edit them now because you've got really cool features to edit out background noise. Like you might as well. I think the more that I see others' humanity, the more that it gives me permission to have my own humanity. We talked about this a lot today with Michael Neal, and he shared a great, a great passage that he had written in his book, which basically talked about all the, t- the different times in his life that he was human. You are human. At times, you're going to be worried about being single. At times, you're going to be worried about whether you're going to be able to survive. At times, I mean, we're just going to worry. And he said something really interesting today that I don't know if it's necessary. Like, I tried to do a little bit of research on it, and I couldn't find the definition that I wanted to. But he said, if somebody worried a marble, they would basically just be rolling it in their hand back and forth. And what I have seen, at least for myself in relation to that, is when, when people are anxious, I've, os- I've often joked or worried that there's this tiny little man that is running around in their stomach that they're worried about. He goes from one decision to another decision, or from one worst-case scenario to another worst-case scenario. Hey, we could even call him Larry the Leprechaun. Hey, the crazy little leprechaun has never had a name. Maybe that's his name. Maybe his name is Larry the Leprechaun. And that's really funny if that happens. Maybe we've got to think of an Irish name because he's a leprechaun, right? Larry. If we said Larry the Leprechaun, would that, does that work? Maybe? No? I don't know. You guys have to let me know because I can't actually hear you talking back to me. But seriously, if, if you guys weren't worried about whatever you're worried about, you'd be worried about something else. But what if there was a different way to do this? What if instead of focusing so much on your own problems that you feel and have, that feel very real to you, what if instead of that, you could focus more on the solution? You are really okay exactly as you are, and I never want you to think anything different. And if you ever get any different idea from this podcast, I'm sorry. That is not my intention. But sometimes I come off totally the wrong way. So I'm I'm just letting you guys know ahead of time. You are okay exactly as you are. And the more you you realize and understand and feel that you're okay, the more possibilities and opportunities that open up to you. We have to quiet our minds. And we have to listen to that inner voice. And when I say quiet our minds, like, you can't really quiet something. I mean, have you ever tried to quiet a child? Like, if you ever have niece or nephews or kids or whatever, you put your hand over their hand and what do they do? They're like, ah, make some funny noise or they lick your hand. They do all kinds of crazy stuff. You tell a kid to shh, it doesn't work. It's the same thing with us. We don't quiet ourselves. We just settle down to what's present and what's real in the moment. And our thinking settles itself down. I don't know if that works with kids. I was just sitting here trying to think if that, I was trying to sit and think if that does work with kids. If like you quiet down, do they quiet down? I'm honestly not sure. One thing I have noticed though, when you get really present and connect with a child, not because you want something from them, but because you want them to see their true nature, that does something. Whatever you are worried about is not actually what you're worried about. Let me say that again. 
Whatever you're worried about is not actually what you're worried about. When we worry about being single, for example, we're not worried about our current state of being single. We're more worried that that current state is going to continue. And that, as I once told one of my clients, that continued to, fr- to worry about you know, basically dying a load. And we, we worry about that and, oh, it's, I'm single and I'm always going to be single and I'm going to be a spinster and have no children and die alone. That was kind of what I said to her. Because we, when we start to worry, we catastrophize. But when you just come back to center or just settle down and allow your thinking to settle, you're able to listen better to yourself. And you're able to notice things. And then you're able to point. Your inner self's able to point to different things. That's like, go do that. And then we receive an insight. Now that whole list is is a little bit of what I learned today in Michael Neal's, but it is so true. If I'm being 100% honest, I would have never thought that my coaching practice would turn more into helping people to see and understand and listen to themselves than it would be basically to tell them, hey, go out and do a bunch of stuff that's going to help grow your business or grow your life or go out and date X amount of people. You know, like those would have been some of the things that I would have said. And and those would have been some of the things that I would have said and given them different challenges to go after. But you can never get enough of what you don't need. You're always going to have some perceived weakness. If you were, if you were completely like whole, whole and perfect and all that good stuff, you'd be translated. Hey, I mean, it happened to that Enoch guy in the Bible. So stop worrying about being perfect and start living. Let me say that again. Stop worrying about being perfect and start living. I think COVID has really been a magnifier for people's lives. There's either been, as was predicted in the beginning, there was going to be a ton of divorces or there was going to be a ton of babies. Because if you spend a lot of time with, if the people spend a lot of time with their spouses and they had a lot of challenges, those problems were just going to be magnified. We're on the flip side, if they were crazy about each other and really enjoyed spending a lot of time together and now they had tons of time together at alone because they couldn't go out and do anything, that relationship was also magnified. You guys, you can, re- you can magnify your problems or you can mag- magnify your relationship. You can magnify your relationship with yourself of what it is that you really want out of this life. It's been said probably at least by a few people that 2020 was, I mean, I've shared before, this was supposed to be that epic year, that most amazing year. But as, as has been often quoted, it, instead, it was a year where people got 2020 vision. They got super clear on what it is that they wanted in their life, what they wanted their life to become. I mean, think about it for yourself. What realizations or insights did you have? And if you acted on those, then good things probably happen. Sometimes I go off on these podcasts and I'm trying to think about how it even relates to what we started talking about in the first place. And maybe you guys just have to bear with me because I just say what's placed on my heart. I just say what that inner voice says. If 
you stop worrying about being invited to the party, you're going to have a lot more invitations. People can sense and smell need and desperation and fear. And nobody wants to be a part of that. I think I remember from a movie, there was basically a line that I'm going to paraphrase, and, but it basically said, if you walk around all depressed, nobody's ever going to want to be with you. And I do, I think there's real truth to that. The people that I keep in my circles, which are fairly small, are people that uplift and bring me up. Even if people are needy and, and desperate and always want my attention, they won't, if they were in my circle, they won't be in my circle for very long. Stop worrying about all the problems that you think you have. And take what I say to that inner voice. For me, one thing that, that helps a lot is if I sit down and actually read a book. Not listen to a book, but read a book. Something about that really settles and quiets my mind. A lot. You know, I, there's, there's a really cool uh, saying that basically says, if you want to talk to Heavenly Father, pray. And if you want to talk to him, if you want him to talk to you, read the scriptures. And while I do get amazing value out of reading the scriptures, I know some of you guys probably aren't into that, and that's okay. That's your choice. I do also get value out of reading books. And I think even there's another cool scripture that says, get, get the best knowledge out of the best books. There's a lot of great books out there that aren't scripture, but they have changed my life. It's just the settling down. I think when we're reading, we just allow our mind to quiet for enough time that Heavenly Father or your source can be able to get through to you. And I got news for you. If you think worrying about your problem is going to make it better, it's not. When you worry, you're almost putting that energy out into the world. There's another great scripture that says, ask and you shall receive. Whatever you ask for will come true. Maybe not in the exact time you think or want, but it will come true. You're just asking the wrong questions a lot of times. And there's no judgment here. I've done it plenty of times. Why is this happening to me? Why aren't I married yet? Well, your brain's a super smart, like, computer. And it's going to answer those questions and not in a good way. It's going to say, well, you're not married yet because you're not perfect. It's going to say, maybe we should use the leprechaun voice, Larry the leprechaun. I got to think of a new name. But you're not perfect. Nobody's going to love you. You're, uh, I'm trying to think what some of the other ones are that people think of. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. You'll never be good enough. Who would want to be with you? What's wrong with you? I'll tell you what's wrong with you. You got a billion things wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. But the more you ask that question, what's wrong with me? Why aren't I married? Or why, aren't, why, why am I in whatever situation I'm in? The more you'll find that answer. Now, let's slightly tweak that question. And really give a question to exploring. Would you want to date you? 
Are you the fun, loving, playful, awesome person that you're looking for? If you're looking for someone that's in shape, are you in shape? Generally, like attracts like. But our questions, our questions are like magnets that draw to us what we desire. Whether we think we desire it or not, whatever we put out in the universe, that is what you're going to get. Your thoughts are like magnets that attract what you desire. Oh, the other part about desire, our mind thinks in pictures, so it doesn't understand the word not. So if you think, well, I don't want to date another one of those guys. You know, I know there's a lot of girls out there that are like, I don't want to date another terrible like, guy like that. How did I do this again? How did I fall for that again? Your mind doesn't understand the word not. So what does it bring you? The exact thing that you do not want. <laughs> there was, in this coaching group just, the, just uh, yesterday that we were in, there was, we were doing some coaching exercises. And I was really hoping, because for the topic that I wanted to talk about, that I'd have a couple of female coaches in my, in my breakout room on Zoom. And you know what happened? It turned out that I had all dudes. <laughs> I, I think I was so focused on not having dudes and like I'd made it so important that Heavenly Father decided to have a little bit of fun with me. And it actually, it wasn't just that though. It turned out to be exactly what I needed. Those guys were the exact right people that I needed to be in that conversation with. Trust it. Trust, trust Heavenly Father's plan for you. I had this really cool analogy come to me today during the coaching course. What was interesting, just to kind of teach you guys how a little bit of this works, is it didn't start out as what it ended up. It's almost like it started out as, well, I mean, I'll just share it instead of coming up with more metaphors. But I started thinking how, you know, learning to trust this inner voice, because it does, it seems crazy. And the first time the first time a coach opened me up to meditation, I thought he was nuts. I was, that was not for me. But then again, my life wasn't exactly working very well, so yeah. I probably should have listened way back then. Oh well, we get, we get it eventually. But I was thinking how learning this new understanding of really just pointing people in a direction of understanding that they, everyone has their own inner wisdom I thought about how it was like I was learning to use a computer and instead I'd be like, this, this is hard. I'm just going to take back the typewriter. <laughs> that was, that was really what I thought at first. And then something happened and like, it just kind of shifted. And then I realized it was more like I was a pilot trying really hard to fly a plane. And somebody shows me that most planes function on autopilot. And, the f and so I turn on the autopilot and that first second there's turbulence, I turn it off, grab the controls and try harder. <laughs> but there's such a power that comes from letting go. Letting go of who we thought we were. Letting go of who we thought we needed. There is a total difference between wanting something and needing it. And when you're worrying about not having it, you're feeling like you need it. And if you need it, a lot of times it's not coming. It's almost like I was watching a baseball game once and the, the Diamondbacks were playing and and they had... They had a few runs and it was kind of, it was really close. And then all of a sudden they just broke it open. And by the time they were like three or four runs ahead, the runs just started pouring in. I think that's how it works. When we just open ourselves up to the universe, open ourselves up to Heavenly Father, like blessings start pouring out. There's, you know, a great leader of mine, his name is Dieter F. Uchtdorf. He was actually a pretty cool, uh, guy in 
that flew planes and stuff like that. But he talked about how a lot of us are out in a giant rainstorm of abundance and blessings, holding up an umbrella. Put away your umbrella. Do the best you can to put away your umbrella. The more you allow yourself and things to settle, the more all the things you worry about will not be a big deal. And I just, and I love the hilarity of the, hey, if it's not worried about one thing, it's going to be another. If you're not worried about like one particular physical char- characteristic, because hey, we all have things that we're like, oh man, I wish that was different. And so do models. And so does everybody. Because that is the human condition. That's just how we are. Well, that's how we've been trained to be, I guess. Don't worry about those things. Here I am saying don't and not. <laughs> After I just said that we, uh, that our mind doesn't understand don't and not. I guess a better way to be would just let those things go. Let them go. Let them fall off if you like old crappy clothes that you really don't want anymore. I actually like the analogy of a snake shedding its skin. I think each of us continuously shed our skin repeatedly. Because the skin is not the snake. At one point, it's a part of the snake. We don't have to worry about it. It just happens. And then you leave behind that skin and then you have another one. Let these things go. Let the things that have troubled you trouble you no more. Guess and one of my favorite mentors and examples, the, the Savior Jesus Christ himself said, Take ye no thought for the morrow. Do you know there's an entire chapter about worry? An entire chapter in the Bible, I think it's Matthew 6 or something, is devoted to worry. Don't worry about this. Don't take, I mean, but he says, take you no thought for the morrow. Take you no thought for this thing. And the scripture in there I love the most is consider the lilies, see how they grow. They don't toil, they don't labor, they don't do anything. And Heavenly Father still takes care of them. And He'll take care of you. The less you worry, the more He's able to speak to you. And the more fun you're going to have. He's got some stuff that is so cool in your future that you can't even begin to imagine. I think each of us wonders. Maybe we gotta subtract the word worry for wonder. I wonder. Hmm. Something to think about. Start wondering in your life. And I don't mean for the negative, like, I wonder when I'm gonna get married. I'm like, I wonder when I get married. I wonder what I'm getting for Christmas. I wonder what. Like, do that type of wondering. You start worrying and leave wondering. If you, <laughs> you see, if you start wondering and leave worrying to the side, I think you're going to find a much more beautiful experience of your life. If this has been helpful for you guys today, Feel free to share it with a friend that could benefit. And if you're wanting to have a conversation and deeper explore some of the things I'm talking about, then message me on Instagram. And if there's anything specific that you'd love to talk about, you don't necessarily want to talk to me, but you want me to talk about something, feel free to message me that on Instagram as well. And as we say, go out and live your adventure.